Minecraft is a sandbox game, meaning that you're supposed to be able to do anything with the tools it gives you. But what about doing... everything? And when I say everything, I mean playing Minecraft until there's absolutely nothing new you can do. I'm obviously not going to be doing everything myself, you'll see why later. So I created Toto Steve. He's what the perfect player could be if they had infinite time and never wanted to do anything but play Minecraft forever. The math in this video gets absolutely insane, so I'd appreciate it if you'd subscribe. Starting off our adventure, we'll play through the game and kill the dragon. I forgot to mention that Proto Steve is also a professional speedrunner, so he managed to beat the game in only 10 minutes. The next obvious step is to beat all of Minecraft's advancements. A normal player would probably call this 100%ing Minecraft, but Proto Steve is no ordinary player. Luckily, while getting all of the Minecraft advancements, you will also complete plenty of other smaller challenges, like eating every food type and visiting every biome. I wasn't able to find any speedruns for getting all the advancements in Minecraft 1.20, but people have completed some in earlier versions in around 3 hours, and since there's new advancements, we'll go with 4 hours. That sets our current total time to 4 hours and 10 minutes, and wraps up what an average player would call completing Minecraft. While you're out there collecting advancements, you should stop by all 128 strongholds and light their portals. Assuming it takes around 15 minutes per portal, which seems about right, then that adds just around 32 hours to our time. The next step would be to start some collections. To do everything in Minecraft, we'll need to collect every possible block in the game. Make sure that for each block, you pick it up, break it, and place it in order to do every action you can with them. Mogswamp and Wunba recently made a video where they collect every block in the game, and it took them just over 19 hours. Since Proto Steve is perfect, we can expect a couple hours to be shaved off without all of the dying. No offense, I'm adding 15 hours to the total time. We're eventually also going to have to collect every item in the game, and a good place to start would be with potions. There's a total of 35 different potions, and with each type being able to be made into their lingering and splash counterparts, we need to brew up a total of 135 potions. It takes 20 seconds to brew a single ingredient, so assuming that you already have everything on hand, we can expect this collection to be done in just about 3,660 seconds, or just over an hour. Not too bad. This is where the difficulty starts to ramp up though. Since we have to collect every item, that means we need every bucket of tropical fish. That might not seem like too big of a task until you realize that the game has 2,700 variants of tropical fish. It's hard to get an exact number on how long this would take, but since you'd have to go out and look for every unique combination, I estimated that you could catch a new type of fish every 4 minutes or so. In total, that would add 180 hours to our time, meaning that Proto Steve has now nearly spent 10 full days in this world. In terms of Minecraft items, Items, there's one that practically beats all others in terms of variation. Armor. More specifically, leather armor. We're going to be making a lot of armor in this world, starting with every single color of leather armor. If you didn't know, you can stack dyes on a leather armor to create a massive amount of different colors. To be exact, you can make 5.7 million different colors of armor, and crafting all of these colors on each piece, you'd end up with nearly 23 million unique items. You would need 400,000 double chests to store all of your color combinations. Assuming that it takes on average 10 seconds to create one piece, this task would take you 63,000 hours, adding 7 whole years of non-stop playing to our total time. And that's not even including the time it would take to get 550 million pieces of leather, but that's not really our problem. Taking a break from item collecting, we're now going to do something unimaginable, reaching the maximum XP level. In Minecraft Java Edition, the highest level you can go up to is 236,609,312. If you try to go any higher, your XP bar literally vanishes. To get to this level, we're going to have to create some sort of mega farm that allows us to get the maximum amount of XP per second. The way XP is gathered is through XP orbs, which can only be collected at a rate of 10 orbs per second. There are 11 different sizes of orbs depending on how much XP they hold. The largest one of these has the nickname the God Particle, which can hold up to 32,767 XP points. To get to the max level, the player needs to collect a total of 256 quadrillion XP points. So assuming that you've created some sort of mega farm that allows you to collect 10 God Particles per second, which has never been done before, it would still take you 24,800 years. 
Within the time that it took Proto Steve to get to this level, the Earth's axial tilt will mirror, meaning that summer will become winter, and winter will become summer. The Sahara Desert will have turned into a lush jungle, and it's predicted that a super volcanic eruption will cover the Earth in one trillion tons of volcanic rock, possibly ending human civilization. But Proto Steve doesn't care, as he's only at the start of his journey. Proto Steve begins his greatest feat yet, visiting every chunk in the Minecraft world. And I don't mean just loading them in. Proto Steve is going to have to physically be within every chunk in the world. Every Minecraft world is 60 million blocks in length and width. Since each chunk is 16 by 16, the length of one world is 3,750,000 chunks. The only way I can really think of to visit every chunk would be by using an elytra, which travels at a speed of 33.5 blocks per second. So, to travel from one side of the world to the other, it would take 20 days of non-stop flying. It's now time to repeat that journey 3 million more times. Fly all the way in one direction, move over a chunk, then fly all the way back. With that strategy, it would take an insane 213,000 years to see the entire world. However, while testing, I found a strategy that could cut that time in half. By zigzagging on the edge of each chunk border, you can effectively visit two chunks at once, meaning it would only take 106,000 years to see the whole world. So, Proto Steve takes flight on his journey. As he loads more and more chunks, the Earth enters a new ice age. Niagara Falls erodes into Lake Erie and ceases to exist. Nearly all constellations in our night sky have drifted so far apart as to no longer be recognizable. A hundred thousand years later, he reaches the final chunk. In the corner of the world, he builds a nether portal and embarks for another hundred thousand year journey, visiting every chunk in the nether. And finally, the end. When his journey is complete, it is now the year 346,000 289 AD. By now, it's safe to assume that if humans are still around, none of them have heard of Minecraft, let alone much of anything from our generation. Proto Steve can now rest assured that he will no doubt become the first and only player to ever complete everything in Minecraft. The game tracks nearly every action you take as statistics, from times you've mined infested cobblestone to number of deaths from dolphins. Yes, you can actually die from a dolphin. Since Minecraft is coded in Java, the highest number it can soar is about 2.1 billion. However, you can actually go higher than that in your statistics. Kind of. After reaching the max integer, your statistics will start going into the negative, up until they reach zero, and the cycle continues. Therefore, the highest number that Minecraft can technically track is negative one. Let's break down the times it takes to max your statistics out, starting off with general statistics. There are a total of 75 of these categories, and assuming it takes on average half a second to up one of these stats by one, you can expect to be spending over 10,000 years on this section alone. Next up is the mobs tab. This tracks every time you've killed a mob and every time you've been killed by one. This section is probably the hardest to track. The killed by part is pretty easy. There are 76 mobs in the game and 45 of those can kill you. While I was figuring this part out, I found it pretty funny that you can actually be killed by a snow golem using this setup. If the golem shoots a fireball through lava, it can ignite TNT which counts as a kill. Anyways, I estimated that if you have the right contraption set up, you could probably die to most mobs every 3 seconds. That adds a little over 18,000 years to the total, which at this point is like a day's work for Proto Steve. Figuring out how long it takes to max out kill counts is more complicated though. The Elder Guardian and Piglin Brutes can only be killed a certain number of times since they only spawn in the world with structures, so we don't have to worry about those. For the rest, I estimated how quickly you could kill them based on the fastest farms out there. Things that are easily bred or farmed, like Pigs and Guardians, I just assigned 1 second, while mobs that appear frequently in the wild were given 3-5 to five seconds. The hardest mob to farm, however, is the Wandering Trader, as it takes at least 20 in-game minutes for them to attempt to spawn. Them and their llamas account for 4 fifths of the total time it takes to max out this statistic. My rough estimate for maxing out your mob statistics is a whopping 325,000 years, which, don't get me wrong, is an unfathomably long time, but doesn't even compare to the items tab. Here you can find every block and item in the game, with the number of times you've mined, placed, dropped, picked up, crafted, and broken them. This gets a little complicated, but I've tried my best to be accurate. The Minecraft wiki lists around 850 blocks in total, all of which I tediously marked as breakable, placeable, and craftable. I then went through each of their wiki pages to get their break times, and calculated the fastest time you can break each of them using a haste 2 efficiency 5 netherite pick. This is going to be super important later. Finally, I estimated that it takes about half a second to place each block, a second to craft, a quarter second to drop, and half a second to pick up. And again, these are averages, so while it might not take a whole second to craft something like a stick, a beacon or netherite block would take infinitely more time. 
I did the same thing for each of the items in the game. I originally assumed that breaking and crafting every block 4 billion times would be the longest amount of time, but it turns out that all of that is vastly overshadowed by breaking your tools and armor. Something like a netherite chestplate can take forever to break, so doing it 4 billion times is obviously going to take a lifetime. Adding everything up in all of the tabs, I calculated that it would take Proto Steve, drumroll please, 1,161,020 years to complete. Due to a 1 kilometer wide asteroid hitting the Earth approximately 600,000 years ago, the computer running Proto Steve's Minecraft is sent barreling into the universe. After spending 1.5 million years in a single Minecraft world, you'd expect it to be pretty torn up. But in all reality, we haven't done anything that really messes with the world's terrain, except for now. To truly do everything in the game, there can be nothing left to do, or to see. Proto Steve's next task is to meticulously destroy every single block of the world, until there's nothing left but void. Just like with visiting every chunk, I'm not going to bother with the time it would take to repair all of your tools. I first coded a script that takes a world file and scans every chunk loaded to make a list of all the blocks they contained. This wasn't an easy task, I had to learn how to decode Minecraft's chunk format and read some binary. But eventually I got it working. All that was left to do was load in a bunch of chunks and see what blocks they had. This was the result. Ignoring the 7.2 billion blocks of air, we get something pretty expected. Deep Slate was first at 43%, then Stone at 33%, Water at 6%, and surprisingly, Tough was in fourth with 3%. I used the calculations I made for block breaking time and distributed that data over all of the blocks in the world. Adding it all up gives us 3.1 billion years. Billion. Okay, so by the time Proto Steve is done destroying the world, there's a very high chance that humans are long gone and the Earth has become an uninhabitable magma planet flying through space. But Proto Steve still isn't satisfied. Even though he's broken every block, the world isn't an empty void like promised. That's because there's still a layer of 15 quadrillion bedrock at the bottom of the world. So it's time to bring out the big guns. I found a tutorial on how to make a machine to break bedrock. And to figure out how long it takes to break all of the bedrock in the world, I first need to find the time to break one. So I think I have to place obsidian here, trapdoor here, TNT right here, and the piston goes right there. So I flick this lever, oh god. Okay, my game crashed. Okay, I think I fixed that issue and I even have a timer now. Click this, and then I, I think I spam right here. And I think, nope. So I think the problem there was I wasn't clicking fast enough. I can change my place block button. Let's set it to Z. Here we go, start that, like that. Okay, now hold down Z. Oh, I think that worked. Okay, that worked. Now I just have to get really fast. Okay, ah, keep pressing. Ah, I forgot to click the thing. No, hold. Oh, go. Oh my God, what a disaster. Kill me. I don't take damage. Ah, I'm holding. That didn't work. Oh, that worked. Stop the timer. Okay, 11 seconds. I want to get sub 10. Go, boom, boom. Just like that. Yes, perfect, flawless. As always, that was like really fast. This might be it. Oh no, that would have been sub 10 if it just broke. I can do this. Start the timer. Boom, boom. Oh my God, I'm so fast. I'm so good. That was actually really good. Oh my God. 814. And it worked! Okay, that's it. I'm done. In total, rating the overworld of bedrock added 4 billion years, meaning that this task alone would take longer than breaking every block in the world. I repeated all of the calculations from the overworld and found that destroying all of the other dimensions, including the bedrock in the nether, would bring our total time to 10.7 billion years. If the earth hasn't been destroyed, it would surely be engulfed by our sun as it becomes a full-scale red giant. There are only two more tasks that Proto Steve needs to complete in order to be crowned the first player to 100% the game. By the end of this task, Proto Steve will have collected every possible combination of armor. And what does that look like? Well, do you want a greenish blue pair of leather boots with a red wayfinder armor trim enchanted with Unbreaking 2, Depth Strider 1, Curse of Binding, and Blast Protection 3? We have that! That's because we have every single combination of enchantments on every type of armor with every type of armor trim. In all, there are 5 quadrillion variants. Assuming that it only takes you 30 seconds to make each of these variations, 
you're looking at spending 5 billion years crafting, upgrading, and enchanting tools, armor, and weapons for the ultimate collection of gear. And when all that is done, Proto Steve is faced with one final challenge. A task so time-consuming that our current models of dark matter predict that the universe will end before it can be completed. The task in question? Banners. There are a total of 809 quadrillion different combinations of banners you can make. You could fill an entire layer of a Minecraft world, 60 million blocks wide and 60 million blocks long, full of chests. And that still wouldn't be enough to contain all of those combinations. Assuming that it only takes you 10 seconds to make one pattern, you're looking at spending 256 billion years making banners. By the 63rd quadrillionth banner, scientists estimate that the expansion of the universe will tear subatomic particles infinitely far apart from each other, marking the end of the universe. But if the universe still exists, who said that we were 100%ing a single Minecraft world? No, just read the title. We're 100%ing Minecraft, which means Proto Steve will have to repeat all of these tasks on every single Minecraft seed, catapulting our total time to 4.7 nonillion years. That's four followed by 30 zeros. If it still exists, the universe has long become a dark, freezing graveyard of dead stars. And Proto Steve, drifting forever into nothing, shuts down, finally satisfied.